Great people. We got we got a lot of people in the room tonight. We got the wild man. His playlist is down there in the description box below the video. Over hundred videos, hours and hours of endless wild man madness content. If you want to watch it, we got Gary Furby. Who we're going to get to in a second. This guy knows how to punch, and his punching prowess landed him in prison at one point. The governor. We got Jamie. Who's been hooking us up with all these brilliant, solid interview guests? I have indeed. And he's a prolific author in his own right, expert on Lee Duffy, Viv Graham, everything that went down in that gangland scene. And we're going to be doing a full podcast with Jamie as well on all those subjects and all those crime subjects. And the professional boxers, soldiers, not criminals. Thanks for coming on, Gary. No, bad, but what? How many titles have you got, and what are they? I've got uh, nine titles. I've got uh, Northern Unlicensed ones, Northern Area, British Heavyweight, Dual National Champion, uh, Bang Bang Promotions. For I can't remember them all. Uh, North East Legends, <laughs> uh, Blindfold One, uh, DD. Just some of them, and the main one, the governor one, the Norman Buckland governor belt. Do you, do, you the think, governor belt. do you think earning them, you've got a natural ability, or did you have to train like crazy? Uh, or both? You used, to, you used to train and just fight. Fight, I don't know. I've done it since I was a kid. Yeah. My last two fights, I, I come back, I says, uh, I'd fight on the Sunday, but then I arranged to have the bare knuckle governor fight on the Saturday, so it was two fights within 24 hours. And you were on a pot before and after. Oh, so. right. <laughs> 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 I got fit for it though, but what happened? I went to Leeds and I never had a drink. I had three hours kept now. Yeah. You broke your head in the first one, didn't you? This I did, my hand in my finger. Yeah. And I went back out and got up next day and bent my fingers on my steering wheel, stopped my car, drove back to Gated, had a dinner, had a pint, went to the boxing show and won the next fight. Well, the next fight with a broken hand. Broken hand. I dropped the lad twice with the same hand as well. And then went to him. And then I went to the hospital for, for four weeks. And when I went to the hospital, they went, how the hell have you coped with that? I literally bent my fingers round. And... So what's your strategy to embrace the pain? I don't know. I've got quite good pain. Tolerance. Tolerance, aye, because this is what you took in that uh, hospital. I went, oh, I just had a couple of proof and I thought it was inflammation. Yeah. The X-ray that uh, was all in bits. Well, obviously, it's healed. But because the one that is in the New Year's evening, I said, I want to climb a mountain. I said, Mr. Fabio, you mental, come and see. Because I was getting loads of tingles. Obviously, the callus, the, the, the bones have went round my nerves and that, so I've got problems with my nerves and my hands and that. So it wasn't yeah. just like a simple break, you basically shot. I had the lumps and that there, yeah. and split through there and broke my finger and went away. And... and some of this aggression came out of you getting bullied as a kid. Yeah, I was in my ma's brothers and my uncle Ronnie and that was boxers and that and uh, they used to do bits of boxing with us and that because I used to get bullied as a kid. I got bullied with, with, from being like nah, six, seven, all the way up until I was about 15 or something. Like. You know. and, and even when I started boxing, uh, when I started boxing, it was like, sometimes I get bullied, I think it was because I'd done a bit of boxing as well. And there was always not one of them, it was always two, three or four yeah. people all the time jump on us and nothing. Yeah. My ma used to forever, I used to can't hear that. I was upset and that, or sometimes I'd have to leave school and you'd have to be legging it. Literally, you just knew you now that the gates were in the fire, they were going to give, give them hiding. You know what the worst is, though? People climb over the fence and you just have to leg it, running it. People do that because they know once you become a professional boxer, your hands are licensed, aren't they? Aye. So you can actually get done for just few Aye, they're clusters there, they're full weapons, didn't they? <laughs> but uh, there was one day, uh, this kid, just a history class, just got up, just started hitting this big lad. And, uh, and I, I didn't ask him, I changed, I was like, I see you, didn't I? I was frightened, you know? Yeah. There was a couple of stone heavy on me. And I turned him straight away. And I got suspended. Yeah. I got suspended, even though they knew. And I got suspended. And uh, I was suspended from school for a week. And But when I went in, I was shit myself. I tell him I was getting the like, thing. And I went, yeah, we've done everything for that week. She yeah. went, she went you're I'm not punishing you. She went, you've been through a hell of a lot, you know? Getting, uh, That's good, bullied, though, you know? isn't it? And after that, it really like, it stopped for a bit, you know? Yeah. Uh, mm. So for teenagers watching this, who might be getting bullied in school, because we've got a lot of young people watch it. Yeah. 
Do you recommend like boxing and sports? Get yourself into a, into a sport. It just really, people shouldn't bully people. To be fair, the people that, the bullies are the fucking cowards, isn't they? Yeah, yeah. But it takes a couple of people to bully, or the people that bullying they've got it's because that person the bullying has got potential, and then we've got now it's jealousy, isn't it? Yeah. And one thing I hear, even to this day, only a couple of years ago I seen. Two, I feel shit by saying this. Like there was about eleven year olds, these two eleven year olds, picking on this laddie eight year old, and this laddie was crying his eyes out. And if I, as soon as I see someone like that, me, I, I got off at me, and I slung the two of them, and I took the bend, yeah. Yeah. And now it is my turn. His mother tells him off. He was crying his eyes out. I went, yeah, he's just been getting picked on off two lads. Get in. You were stuck after yourself. I thought, some people go with tough love, don't they? Ah, but I thought the poor Ben was probably crying, and that's mm. a horrible thing. It's even worse now with the internet thing, isn't it? Yeah, there's two lot of bullying as well. <laughs> a lot of people. It's mentally and physical, yeah. isn't it? Ah, and there's a lot of young children that yeah. do self harm and stuff like that. Isn't it? So, what age did you become an <coughs> amateur boxer? And how was that? <coughs> I had my first fight in there, March 1993. I was 13 year old. Wow. Uh, I boxed at the Cox Lodge, um, I think it was in Gosvav. And you could smoke in the bars and that then. Obviously, I couldn't smoke, I was only 13. But fuck, no, man, I, uh, it was dark, smoky. Uh, after that first room, I remember your lungs would be on fire. I think you had it with 40 towels. I, would, I was like boxing with the same age, and I was uh, boxing the same age. And when you'd look at them shows, you'd think, my God, you know, the people would just be puffing and puffing and putting bets on you. And you think, how the hell did that, did that, you know, 25 years was it now? But Long yeah, it was horrible, years, but horrible wasn't it? Right? So you guys have trained, you're physically fit and you go to a smoky room. Like, it can't be any good for your yeah. lungs, can it? Strips, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, the lad I boxed was there. Uh, I boxed him six times called Paul McGreevy. Uh, he beat us, uh, I think he beat us by a point or something. And we ended yeah. up boxing each other six times. I won 6 4 with them. Uh, but like you see, the, Back then it was different, wasn't it? There was smoking and that, people smoking and that. But, um, I had a good good career, amateurs and that. And yeah. Uh, yeah. Then you started working the doors in the big market, Newcastle? Yeah, yeah. Why is that area so notorious? For back then it was notorious, the big market. It was yeah. lethal. Um, well, just just to, um, to enlighten Sean, um, the big market was, it was a place where when did you work there? 98? Yeah, right. So if, if Gary had been um, a doorman seven years earlier, Lee Duffy, Lee. when he was coming round, knocking all of Graham's doorman out, obviously Gary would have met Lee yeah. Duffy. Yeah. Yeah. It was a place where there's loads of pubs, um, loads of nightlife back in them days. It was a co Seen Cozy Joe's. Um, Cozy Joe's was their Macy's. And it was just a place, everyone would come for hen do's, stag do's, and that was a place where I imagine if you, were a, if you were a dorm in Newcastle, you earned your money. A bit like Portsmouth. Yeah. Ah, yeah, earned your money there. Like. Yeah. I was there. Uh, <clears throat> I was I was working while I was struggling. I needed some extra coin. And uh, David Gregory, who, uh, who was Graham McCrory's manager, mm -hmm. I used to box for a um, fellow in Victoria, amateur who was David Gregory's gym, who Graham McCrory used to box out of, train for his fights, yeah. Joby Tyers, Terry French. He was a pro gym as well. Um, and Bernard O'Hagan, he was like a coach, and Tommy Tote used to train us, you know. Um, and David Gregg was like, oh, I was only little, I was only about 11 off stone or something. And he went, I'll get you a job on the doors. I was like, yeah. He went, I'll get your badge. So at the time I applied for the city council and that. Yeah. And, uh, and Paul Lister, everybody heard of Paul Lister in the North East, he was... Paul Lister, professional fighter. Northern area champion, oh, and yeah. four, he was four for the Commonwealth heavyweight title and that. And I started working for Paul in the big market. What was the wage like then? Like sixty pound a night, I was like. Well, you were better than what the, what the poor lads are getting now. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, the big fella, yeah. Shell stack was getting more on them, man. Doing the now. Yeah, yeah. You see, you see it was it was cash and You got a tenner now. I was through the books. You went about eighteen, nineteen. Yeah. Uh, I used to make a few quid back then. The lads in the old days, though, they haven't um, squeaky clean, aren't they? Aye. Uh, we used to have to scrap. You had to, you had to have scrap yes, so yeah. Um, I think basically, if you were a knuckle dragon Neanderthal psychopath, was that was in the small print. Where if you could really fight, you that enhanced you to get the job. Yeah. Where now you've got to work with the police, and that them days are all finished. Uh, you know. And you see, we had Brian Cockley yesterday. He is, he, he is what he what he says in the small print. Yeah. But these days. 
you've got to, you, you know, Steve Rafe, you've had him on, and Steve's very clever, he can talk, and Aye. you've got to communicate far more, and I think Aye. the days of that, that you know, all when got that SIA ruled, didn't badge it? was kicking in, I remember standing on the all door, the cage door, out, in the big mall, it was that bad cage ball, we went <coughs> to the uh, Pilgrim Street Police Station, right, and reception, there was a notice telling people, the public, do not go into this bar so bad. <laughs> 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 That's how bad the bar was, kids. Good advertisement. <laughs> do you have plenty of doormen on, like? Can you get you to four one? Days? There's only before one. Wow. But uh, back then and now, like, used to, we used to be off our heads, not your yeah. You put up with the people. You're you couldn't right, stand yeah. there being normal. You had to be right. And you, but then you, you were fighting, you could whack them with chairs and that, you kind of do that. Yeah. Move, kind yeah. Of. But you had it at the time then. Back in the day when I used to go to the nightclubs when it was like 19, 20, they'd have like, um, well, the dominant would have baseball bats at the back of the bar. But the first thing they'd do is, the, the two of them would grab you, one of them have you in their dog, the other one chicken wing you. You just get into the stairs and fucking throw it. Open the door, aye, oh, yeah, the fire exit hand yeah. right here. No, <laughs> you could then, aye. You used to show up at my house, didn't you? Your face black and blue. And yeah. then next week, you'd be back down fighting the bouncers again. <laughs> That's how he <laughs> trained as a young person. <laughs> never learned. He was one of them, just never I don't get one, but then the others would get me. <laughs> so you go back the week after for the other one. And no one else would come down with me. Come on, let's go around. Fuck off with you, you bastard. <laughs> get it, Bella. <laughs> Hmm. Right. So, any notable fight stories from the bouncer days? Oh, I feel like uh, there was one uh, who made the paper actually. Uh, <coughs> was uh, was this guy in the toilet, women's toilet? Right? So, comes in, you made Gary Ferry, he knocks on the door. And this bloke is well, he's known over Newcastle. Uh, and you're by Newbigin. So, he <coughs> tried to get out, wouldn't get out. So, we made, instead of dragging him out, fucking sparked him. So the door shut, we couldn't get him out. Yeah. So fucking wake him up to get him out. <laughs> oh, so he felt like that. Aye, yeah. so, get wake someone gets him out. Of course, how long, didn't it? Well, he went and got his mates. There were seven of them. And one of them was kind of tiny. Timmy was about six foot four. Mm. Do you well, know something? He's in the Lee Duffy book. Is he? Is he a doorman? I don't know. Big, tall, bald. He's called Tiny because he's massive. Aye. And it, one of my books, The, the Hole from? of the Moon. Yeah. From, our top will be it. from Newcastle where Aye. basically Duffy, he was working for with, with Grim, the doorman, and basically Aye. Lee flattened him, flattened a couple of the bouncers and said, I'm going to leave you awake. Tell Viv Graham the Duffers been with that name Tiny bounced the camera. That meant he was about six foot he was eight, fucking huge, massive. Aye. You read the whole of the moon, he's in it. But anyway, I'm sorry, there. carry on. I'm a little. We fucking had a fight with them at the side of the door. But uh, now you can't do. You can't even well, <coughs> pull the cautious out. And it was the one of the first times I heard of cocaine being mixed with ketamine. So I fucking whacking them and knocking the teeth out like dominoes. But they were still coming back at you. Still coming back high as kites. What the fuck? So we jammed the side door shut. And they ran round the front, didn't they? Well, it was just like, it was like, um, I don't know how you can describe it. The boy held framed the people, but you just seen people flying like that. Yeah. <laughs> and as we come up the stairs, it was like, uh oh. <laughs> 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 a couple of other two dumb scatters. So I got pinned in between two speakers. I Me, mean, I was getting bottled for fun, man, I swear. Fucking hell, man. The fucking bottles I broke were well, the ones that didn't hurt because I had a second chance, didn't I? Yeah. Straight away. And uh, he was one of them, and mm. I fucking cracked him, and he never flickered, like, yeah, <laughs> yeah oh, it's on top of him, bang, oh, bang, oh. And then I got fucking slung down to some stairs. It was a good, good, good scrap. <laughs> I found the best thing with bottles is, if they actually break, it doesn't break, it's fucking it much. It doesn't break? No. The ones that didn't break, fucking Yeah, it's like it? the, mm. you know, like the, the old Grouch ones and the mm. fucking... The old soda water ones, the big, thick fucking glass. Solid at the mm. bottom. Fucking hell. Knacker. Yeah. Yeah, was had wrong job. We had Newcastle Brown Ale bottles over on there. Yeah, Newcastle Brown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. yeah, and we had there was another one uh, in Destiny. Well, I'd been like I wasn't allowed in Newcastle for a few years, but through like I got to jail. It's another story. In the way. Probably <laughs> saved you some money, didn't it? Aye, right, but I ended up going back to work in town and. If you old face had seen us, wanted to fucking fight us again. Ah, uh, right, yeah. And one of them was these two gypsies, and they uh, went to sell the door, and they were having to be hired out, and that turns up. And they were like, ah, oh, he fucking, you know, like, it was because he used to be a big muscly lad. Uh, fucking my chin, you know, like, I was like, oh, how on, get up. And the other doorman left us, 
And when he, the manager, Brian Coleman, stood there by my side. He does. And just the chock a block nightclub, rough as fuck. And the, 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 the floor just turned into a perfect circle. It was like someone would have seen a film. Yeah, right, yeah. And there's me. And the manager's going, I'm with you, I'm with you. And I was like, oh. And the two lads, yeah. So I was like, well, what can I do? Where's we fighting, James? Did you fight? Um, I got that done, you know? Brilliant, smash one, and I got the other one, smashed like, smack him and whacked his head off the pole. <laughs> so it was, if not, I was pleased, because if not, I was fucked, like. Fuck, yeah. <laughs> I've got the fucking doorman and run away, so you bastard. Ah, that's a good <laughs> <one>. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And the manager, like that, and the manager, he knows the manager, yeah. a lovely bloke as well, crack and kill, eh? Well, I, some, a lot of towns on the doors, a lot of tails on the doors, like that. It was good of him to have you back, though, because you, mm. you wouldn't imagine the manager would say, that's what they have the doorman mm. for, innit? Ah, you know what I mean? I was telling, telling a few people that story, <coughs> and they, when I can picture it now as I see it, like, you see the dance floor is chocker. And it was just like, now nah, like Moses part in the sea. Made the perfect circle. <laughs> it, it, it went the perfect circle, aye. It was fucking weird, honestly. Yeah, it's the stage, though, what? <laughs> <laughs> honestly, if, if it had to be, if you could have put it in the film, it was like something in the film, man. Yeah, man. yeah. Well, aye, aye. Well, aye, there's many, and many of scraps there. Was the times then, as a bouncer, that you feared for your life? Um, yes, aye, a couple of times, aye. aye. What happened there? Um, there was once, uh, oh, a couple of, I love, Kind of shoot us a couple of people. Kind of shoot us like I. Um, Shot with guns. No, nah, yeah. that's not good. That nah, is it. Nah. Yeah, it's so what's, what was Brian Cockrell's motto? If there's a gun, you run at him. If it's a knife, you I run away. I put it in the book. It was yeah. um, one of them. I stuck the, in the back. It's an old, it's an old saying, <laughs> which is <laughs> you, <laughs> you, <laughs> you <laughs> char- <laughs> yeah, yeah. You charge at a gun and you run from a knife because you can't outrun a bullet. So if someone's pointing a gun at you. You, you run at it, not away. Yeah. Where if someone's got a knife, you literally run that way. Especially that guy used to do. If he had knives, I'd be running forever, mate. And I can't even run. Yeah. His mm. response when we saw him that was, I run at both. Well, <laughs> knife or gun, yeah, I run. There, there's been a story actually with Brian. Um, I left the guy's name out, but he's um, he was a well known um, character of um, always done for armed robberies. And he was saying he was going to put it on Brian. And, um, Sex, man. Yeah, Brian turned up his house. And this guy was like, stood like Alma Fudd with a gun, like marching. And he, Brian got out the car and rather than point the gun at him, he seen Brian and round the back and just jumped. And I said to Brian, what was your, why, why did you do that? And he said, he's not fucking trying to intimidate me. And, you know, and it's, you can't fight a fucking gun, you know though, I mean? can you? He stood there with a, a 410, I think it was, and this guy, he was a serious gun merchant, yeah, you know what right. I mean? He wasn't there, and he's like, well, I just turned up at his house and I chased him around the back, and I was like, right, OK. That other knife guy was a total nut as well on Tuesday. That's all about, he's the one who said, if they've got a knife <laughs> yeah. on a gun, I run out. Don't have the belt of knives <laughs> like that. Oh, Shane Taylor. Shane Taylor. Brilliant story. Yeah, I love yeah. Shane. He's, um... He's oh, cool. scary yeah. back in the day. Yeah. He's, um, do you know something? There's a saying, of, you know, when you look at pictures like Ronnie Cray and, you know, you see, you can see the madness in his eyes. Picture of Ronnie Cray where he's smiling. You don't know whether he's smiling because he likes you or because he's hurting you. Shane, if you're watching, I love you, brother. But you can see, Paul Venice said, you know, in his eyes, he said, he, he threatened um, Paul years ago, but before the, but they were friends and he... They went to have a fight in Middlesbrough about 15 years ago and he said, you get involved and I'll effing stab you. And he said, I could see the look in Shane's eye. He said, he said this guy actually will kill me. You he see like, through oh, no, no. it, Sarge. But he's telling the story, you just like see the almost through his dark soul, you know what yeah, I mean? He's, um, to his credit, he's been through a lot, Shane Taylor. He's got a great story. He's getting a yeah. film made on him. Um, he's, he's got a book out. Possible another book next year, and um, you know the good thing is obviously many of our guests is he's come out the end, and he's here and he's saying that that wasn't good, that wasn't clever. I met his victims as well, and it's, it's, it's turned his life yeah. from what he was, how he's turned his life around. That's amazing. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. you know, that's to hard go, to go meet your victims, isn't it? Yeah, you have to go and say like sorry to him. <laughs> <laughs> and he said at the end of it all was the biggest thing was was known. I was wrong at the end of it. I was angry. I was, you know, and, and I just thought my life's been a total lie. But it takes a, a man to say sorry. So he's been good enough to, yeah. uh, big enough to pull his... It takes a man to say that he was in the wrong as well, like, you know what I mean? 
I blame every fucker else, mate. <laughs> yeah, I, can tell, I can tell a lot of things that I've done, and I can't even remember what I've done because yeah. I, I used to be crackers years ago. <coughs> and I'd be like, and I, think, I think back and I was like, I really do that. And, was, and like, same as what them thing. Mm. And I was kind of like, oh, well, yeah, what a cunt I was years ago, even though you didn't realise it. Mm-hmm. You get your mates who've known you. People tell you what you've done. They tell you what you've done, and you're like, yeah, Fuck what a yeah. dick I was mm. years ago. I, I, bet you've, I bet you've had that a lot, though, haven't you? Yeah. You woke up the next day, and Sean's been like, blah, 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 and you've been like, oh my God. Well, I know I'm fucked up because he doesn't talk to me for two days. Yeah. <laughs> oh, this, is, this is back when I didn't let him know where I lived. That's <laughs> how dangerous he was. His best mate wouldn't let him know where he lived. That's class. I watched a, watch a documentary for you the other day. Uh, I think I'll tell you what, James English, if you're watching James, I love you, big shagger, call him that. And uh, he said, he said, basically, he said, you said, you said, wild man was totally, the word was, Unrehoused, like you couldn't house Unrehousable. him. Unrehousable. He was living on Tempe Beach Park with the homeless people with a Rambo knife and a baseball bat. Looking for crystal meth. Well, that was constant. He had that constantly. <laughs> crystal meth and crap. No sleep for days. <laughs> and he took control of all, wherever he goes. He takes control of all the street people and yeah. he has them all working for him and, and doing. <laughs> yeah. Even in LA, same thing. People dropping off crack and rocks in the middle of the night. Give this wild man. Give this yeah. wild. We don't just arrived there. Did you you go in your house and wild man has got. Pimps and prostitutes, and you know, it's like yeah. James. I think said it was a normal day for me. That do you know? What I mean? yeah. <laughs> yeah, but unbelievable. And that's why people want to read your stories. But we'll talk about that later. What's your nickname for James English? Big Shagger. Why? Um, it's funny actually because Brian Cockrell got married, and uh, James called him Big Shagger in Glasgow. It's a, it's a, it means um, a player. Like go on, lad, Big Shagger. Right. Uh, right, and uh, right. James is handsome and good looking, and you know Bante is coming. So he always James is always ringing me. He's gonna come and stay a couple of months. We're gonna go hiking. Um, and he's a good guy, James English. Yeah. He's got a heart of gold. Yeah. Um, you know, some people you can energy comes off him, but you can actually look right through him, and you think. I fucking love you. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, so, yeah, he's got do you know what I mean? He, yeah. But uh, next time you see him, Big Shagger is James English's name. So, people watching this, please go and subscribe to Big Shagger's channel. <laughs> it's really rising right now. Yeah. So, you said um, you were crackers back in the day. Was that with your fists or with weapons as well? <laughs> fists mainly, I. Fists, fists uh, yeah. all the type of weapons, I. Uh, little dust eyes, knives out. When these guys come in the club with guns, what's your protocol? Like we've got us out of the way, didn't we? Uh, obviously, when I left, I got chased for about three months. Afterwards, for th- with three months, they were high. Yeah. And I got dealt with, got sorted. Um, yeah. There was another one who was a lad. Caught, there's a cage bar, that's how wild it was. You, mm. fuck, you didn't know where you were. There was a kick-off and was sorted out. And this lad, bless him, he only went to tap us on the shoulder. I was up the height and I turned and I fucking whacked him, didn't I? And I just knocked him. You don't want the white, yeah? Nah, and he, he cracked his head on the floor. And he was in a bad way. And his, uh, his dad was in jail saying he's going to fucking sort us out now. I says, tell his dad he'll get the cunt now. And he yeah. gets it. <laughs> so <laughs> I didn't even happen, you know, this blow it was. And we were standing, we're standing at the door and he's and uh, when you Gary Fabio and I, went, can you come down now whenever we were He fucking pulled the gun on us. I was only this far away. Yeah, whoa. But you know, I managed to sort shit, it, managed to sort it out, aye. It was gonna pop us out, aye, aye. Mm. Well, going back to your boxing as a teenager, when you did your first fight, is there an adrenaline spike? Is the fear of you already managed to control that from do, do you know, do, <coughs> it's funny, I can never remember getting really nervous on any fights. You didn't only get only nervous. a couple of fights. See back in the day, Jimmy will mm. tell you, back in the day. You used to win as a spare. Yeah, that's how I used to box all the time. So, if, if you were meant to box, you, I, mean, I never had that chance that I was actually on a bill. So they just called you in. It's all changed now. It's all changed. near spares now. So you, you you turn up with shows and I'd win as a spare and then you think, well, you're not getting on. There's your mm. meal ticket away. Yeah, What's yeah, your yeah. boxing? And then you get told you're boxing and you're like, shit. <laughs> and this night, this night I was boxing, fucking, I win as a spare. And I'd wait in a few times as a spend, you just think, ah, right, ready for me, me, little ticket, we'll watch the boxing. Yeah. 
Fairy it's like the football, like being a sub in it. Aye, yeah. Well, yeah somebody yeah. pulls out the put in, mm. they went, uh, Fairby, you're boxing 20 minutes. I was yeah. like, oh shit. <laughs> you haven't got time to be nervous, have you? <laughs> <laughs> trying to get ready. So I cannot really, I've only been nervous a couple of times over 130 odd fights. So. I think boxers train as well. You, you, you train through that, don't you? They know that the fit, mm. and it's like, I used to, no matter what, I used to always get butterflies just before I had to fight. Mm. I'd say, <coughs> as I train and that, and I'm all right like this, and then as I, as I start walking to the ring, I'm not nervous, I just, I can't, like, with a zone, like, like, relaxed. If you've seen us box, I'm, like, I, yeah. didn't, I, didn't, I didn't get ten, tension up, I just relax. I've always wanted to ask a boxer, you know when you're lying down and they throw that fucking medicine ball on yeah. you, does it hurt, is that? <laughs> no, because um, I've seen people crack the ribs of us. I went to Joe Walton's box club in Middlesbrough, and uh, I got it. On I was only about thirteen, banging. I got home, shorts were full of blood, okay, and yeah. the trainer dropped it on my, you know what? Yeah. I had to go to the doctors. On your dick? Yeah. And uh, and basically, I, I get out in front of my mum and dad and everything, and then. Oh, it was so embarrassing, but uh, it does have uh, funny say that. Uh, yeah, it's it was just one of them things. It's like slams, isn't it? I was next to you got in the toilet, but I've had it, like. I used to like wind wow. the kids up in the gym and say, this is, this is to tense your neck muscles up, you've got a shot and head it. And some of them would be daft enough, because boxers are the thickest people in the world. <laughs> Anna, do you so know what I mean? I've had some kids on the pads, and I've, I've left, you know, and they've hit themselves in the face. I told one kid in the gym I was training like years ago that Back to the Future was based on a true story. Boxers are really thick. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, but I, I had somebody tell me in a boxing club that the, the thought the Titanic was actually a fucking story. They didn't know it was real. Yeah, <laughs> but the, so for some of the funniest jokes, so it is real. Some of the funniest, <laughs> <laughs> some of the funniest banter ever is when I like when I was in the army or in boxing gyms, and it's always uh-huh. funny because everyone always take the piss out of people. Do you know what I mean? So yes. Yeah. So how long did it take for your dick to heal? I was only a kid. Um, God, uh, I was actually quite a bad, bad way. It was really, really embarrassing. Yeah, Asian doctor did come out and, and uh, yeah, I get out in front of our mum and dad and all that. And uh, <laughs> yeah, the God, you know. And some of my mates will remember that, and they were just covered in blood. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, it's, I snapped uh, my banjo string once. That was well, that was like that. Bleeding exactly all down my suit and everything. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but obviously I. Oh, did you snapped your banjo. I did. Yeah, that's exactly what the blood was. But yeah. obviously, I presume I did it in a different way. How you done it? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but, uh, up, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wasn't the medicine battle? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the corner when you really spoke, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I was only 30. I was only 30. He's gone red. <laughs> <laughs> I just discovered corn. You know what I mean? So. <laughs> <laughs> I've split my Jap's eyes wider with a fucking taser gun. What? Yeah, <laughs> yeah with a taser. The, some bird was with in America. You just like taser and me. So I'd like I'd get a clit out and taser her. She'd come and she'd curry, and I like, mm. I put it on my balls. I liked it. And I'd put it on my jack one day, a fist, and it fucking split a little tiny bit. Like, can I just say now, I can only imagine what Peter Mahoney's book would look like. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just like I put it on my page last night, and Peter was just like, "Wow, Jamie, oh yeah, like, you know." And all the stories we were talking about earlier about. Being on crystal meth and he was there to guard it, but he ended up doing it all in. <laughs> it's like it's like a film. Do you know what I mean? It's like you are gonna be my gift to the world next year. Thank you, we appreciate Sarah. that. Do you, know what I mean? <laughs> Do you know like Ricky Gervais had an idiot abroad? Uh, I've got Peter Mahoney. So you, well, me and Sean have got Peter Mahoney. I think you for witness. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody who worked for me was under the instructions. When Wild Man shows up and says Sean said to give me some drugs or give me some money. If you give it him, it's on you. Because mm. he's just going to fucking do it all. Mm. Well, I was a cunt. I'd wait for his dealers to go and drop it off. And then I was his collector. So I'd go and knock on the door, say, have you got the money? He said, I've only just got the drugs. I said, oh, give me some of the drugs then. Mm. Sean said, it's all right. So I'd get some off him. And then a the week later, he'd go and collect for it. He said, but... I said, well, where's all the fucking money? He said, I'll give you like, so many pills. I said, oh, I can't remember that shit. Come on, fuck off. 
trying to wind me up, aren't it? <laughs> so I'd say the drug off and make you pray for it. <laughs> I watched a thing the other day, and you said, back in the day, back in the day, me and, me and well, Wildman, how many ecstasy, yeah. I think James English said, how many ecstasy did you take in one night? And you said, well, me, me and Wildman used to try and outdo each other 30 a weekend, yeah. but with MDMA, you only get so high. Yeah, that's do you know what I mean? So, but I can only imagine some of the stuff you've got to tell me. On days, Saturday, I'd, usually, I'd wake up with big fat crack rock. Yeah. And then I'd, I'd get on each <coughs> week. And meth. meth. And then I'd go to Circle K, get a couple of 40s of old English or King Cobra, like malt liquor, and a bottle of brandy. So then I'd just smoke weed for a bit, and then I'd get back on the meth for a bit, and then I'd have a big fat rock. And then I'd think, ah, I'm going out either to collect or to tax, or to, just going out for a bit. So I'll go for a wander and like fucking just get lost. You come back two or three days, no yeah. shoes. Yeah, there. yeah. His shoes all broken open, his feet all blistered. Wide eyed. God. One one time he went in the house and ended up fucking getting arrested. Just walked in a random house. Well, I thought it was just where he house. was or who he I was. Or where it was. <laughs> and some of these houses in America look exactly the fucking same. Mm. So I just walked through the fucking, <laughs> fucking door. You know what I mean? <laughs> get out! That's great. So no, sorry, wrong house. Mm. <laughs> fucking police were there then. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Gary you um, turned professional at what age 18, 19 how, how did that happen then how was that <clears throat> what was um, I kept getting asked to turn pro by Paul Fisk and that and uh, who used to box for Tony Conroy and, uh, and at the finish because I, I think I, I went as high as I could stand <coughs> as amateur and, uh, I, and I missed the year years so it was pointless to just keep boxing yeah and, uh, and I was thinking right, I'll give it a go so I went through to Sunderland, to try Tommy Conroy's gym in Sunderland, who was the, who was the manager and for Paul Charters, Terry French, John Davis, who for over the world title and that. Uh, and I'd done the ring test and with the Buchanans and that were there, Danny Moyer and that. And you? <coughs> world turn pro, uh, turn pro for him. Um, basically it was for the money and just to sell for I can. But it was hard for me because <clears throat> I had a burn on the way, mm -hmm. and I was working five days a week, and I was doing like four nights on the doors as well, four or five nights on the doors. Yeah. So it's no know, life for a professional fighter, is it? Nah, so, yeah. and the, back then there wasn't any sponsors. Mm -hmm. Struggling. No exposure, do. there was no Steve Riff on the scene. <clears throat> and that was that, wasn't. So you didn't get paid per fight, you would <clears throat> get paid weekly, no matter if you fought or not. It's per fight. I don't know it would have just been per fight, but like... You'd get about 500 quid and obviously... 500 quid back then. You'd get about 350 by the time your, your seconds and your manager took you... Now if you turn pro, you get like 12, 1300 quid a fight. You, yeah. Journeyman gets 13, 1400 quid a fight. I was getting 500, For 500, 500, 500 quid a fight. Mm. Okay, sounds like a lot of money, but then ring girls... It was a million, I was making more through the week. Yeah. Your job. I written a book last year... Um, called Tales of Puglism, if anyone knows. <laughs> <laughs> um, and basically that was... It was, you know, people think, why do people get punched in the face for a living? There's 20 people, a um, few people in the book, I think it might have been on here, but um, basically, you know, it's, among the Sky Sports glamour of the lights in the small halls, it's a dirty doggy dog it's world. And, um, you know, there's no money in it. There's, 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 in it there's no money in it. Um, Steve Rafe, who's... Um, boxers, the poor, poor boxers now... Now, even nowadays, yeah. <coughs> local boxers are under far too much pressure yeah. to fucking sell tickets. I know lads, good lads, that box on local shows mm. and actually had to pull four or five hundred quid out of their own pocket mm -hmm. to okay, pay yeah. for the, the so many and, tickets. And Jimmy Cannon did for one of his fights in uh, Paul O'Hagan did it as well. I just did Steve in box Rave. for nothing. I've just did Steve Rave's book, Every Boy's Dream, again. <laughs> That's a joke uh, No, I did do. But um, Steve said, you know what, after three months of promoting a show, tickets everything if you come out with 500 quid at the end of it all you've done well and them guys people like that you know your um your neil fannins your mal gase your steve race your reg longs they're doing that literally for the love of the game there's yeah. no big money unless you, you signed for eddie hearn and you've won the olympics or the commonwealth there's no big money in boxing is boxing no no that's why a lot of people have turned on license Un yeah. there's more money in unlicensed yeah i did um that's why i've done it because there's yeah. more money in unlicensed yeah. than dominic negus and the best you get the more of a knockout motion you have the less you get punched in the face isn't it, as well uh, as yeah. mm -hmm. i did um dominic's book a couple of years back and he said i got more for the unlicensed i was getting 15 20 grand a fight and when he was fighting all the others and he was getting next to nothing uh, so there's a massive difference isn't it uh, it's crazy man isn't it there's a massive difference in the skill level then professional <coughs> 
Yeah. In skill level from amateur to professional. Yeah. Yes, yeah. he is. Aye. Aye. That's why you've got to do like a ring test and all that, and there's got to be a little member of the board coming and watching that. Yeah. Um, it's a lot of difference between boxing and you know, like your type of boxing for the government and stuff like that, and then the night like, sort of like UFF type <coughs> of stuff. What's that UFF? You know, like it's where it's like USC. Ultimate USC, fight, yeah, ultimate fight. Yeah. Look, I had one of them once. Your elbows or anything. Ah, yeah, I fucking got chinned. That. <laughs> <laughs> you wasn't expecting that coming to kick. <laughs> I had seven fights in six weeks, didn't I, and, uh, in what you call it there. Uh, I'd been clubbing. Yeah. And I, I, I was sitting in the pub the next day having me dinner. And I was still off cutting there. I got phone calls saying, Gary, would you fight? I said, it was Ian Cooper from Hartlepool. He's so brilliant. I and I, he, he fought John Peter, one of the ABAs. And I was a class pro. boxer. He was unbeaten. Pro, I, I that was Ian Cooper. I was a shit-hot cage fighter. I didn't know it was him, did I? And there. <laughs> a monkey mm. hanger. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They went, will you fight? Where are you? Um, how much in this year's 350 pound? And there, uh, your wife, so I was going there. So I got a chain for it. I went, now watch Bruce Lee. Yeah, <laughs> I did. Then I didn't realise the fucking. I watched Bruce Lee sitting there. I, was sitting there like that, I worked a day or two and I was like, fuck, I'm fighting the night before. Mm. And I had a rematch with Stevie Yorov mm. <coughs> from Wales. And I got a draw and I had two black eyes. And I turned up and I turned up at the show the next day. And uh, they were like, oh, what's your thing? What you've done in that? And I just put on a load of lies. I was mm. more yeah. sports in there. <laughs> when, when was your last fight? I went last night. How did you go against Cooper? Because he, he actually yeah. fought Brian I, McGee, I, he was I, like a world on, champion, and he was a proper yeah. name. I know, I, I clicked on who it was, I went, fuck <laughs> it. I would have done that a run off. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know who it was. <laughs> now, so I was like, oh, I went, hello, you know, I went, I'm fighting you. He went, oh, I went, 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 I that, the baggy round because like, the kick yeah. and stuff. Aye, yeah. I, well, fucking out of these gloves on, and uh, there was people coming in, man, with ankles fucked and everything. I'm on the pads, bam, 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 bam. And people are going, Oh, you're looking good. I'm like, Yeah, how would you do that? How would you do that? <laughs> well, well, I've never done this before. Mm. They went, You're kidding, you're me in an event, fighting Cooper. <laughs> 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 I went, I've never done it. So, in any ways, Cooper come out. He hired a shot one, two, and he, I got missed, he missed up with it. And I hit him with the one two and dropped him, mm -hmm. puggled, and I thought, get it, and I've done it. And I did not have to jump on him, but he pulled him quick, didn't he? He pulled his doom by my legs and fucking done his end. Fuck is that? You should oh. have work, I think. You know what I mean? I'm like, I'm He's laughing. fouling, right? <laughs> Fuck you, <laughs> idiot. <laughs> <laughs> he was coming along the you know floor. Like, like, coming along the floor, you, grabbing you legs. Boxer two, where Tong Po comes to the ring. And he doesn't know, he thinks it's a kickboxing fight when it's all that Muay Thai. No. Yeah, it's Muay Thai. That's what he's done. He come along the front, I'm like, looking like that, I'm trying to hit him like that, and I had no clue. And he grabbed me <clears> legs, <throat> pulled us down, started crowning his way up us, and I had him like that, and I was fucking smacking him like that. And he could, he was hurting him, he was whacking him in the ribs, and his arms started giving way. I started fucking bashing, like, it didn't knock us either now, but like, I was pounding my head. And I stopped the fight, I, I. <laughs> Did you tap out? No, the ref is not there. <laughs> <laughs> Some of them guys are mad. You see a word like, it looks like they're going to break their arm. Yeah. And if you don't tap out, they will break your fucking arm. Yeah, 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 yeah. A couple of days later, because he was meant to fight in Sunderland, and he went, he had a pollute, he had a concussion. Really? Aye, uh, I said, concussion, I went, I've got a fucking bruise on my back like a tiger's foot. <laughs> <laughs> the two black eyes joined up into one. I was like, fuck. <laughs> 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 Kung Fu Panda. Yeah, I got off on loads of fights after that. I mean, yes, I'm retired. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not doing that anymore. <laughs> uh, he's a good lad. Yeah, Cooper, like, he, he beat a lot of good, a lot of good people in the yeah. uh, license as well. Really good. I think boxing, you, you need more, it's more professional, but you, you need a better physique, I think. What's that, the boxing? Yeah. 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 It's quite, I'd say it's the best discipline guy. Yeah. It? To get your body in shape and all that. Uh -huh. So your life was derailed by going to prison. Yeah. You want to give us a story of how that came about? Oh, well, basically, it was through my ex-girlfriend and her boyfriend. Uh, we'd split up and I was getting harassed. I mean, she was just saying, this would be Facebook slandering, isn't it? Um, 
and so our aim was to just to to go into town this night with him and to ruin my life. So I was wanting to see us with nothing because I left. So I took the night off work. Um. And she's left the my kids in the house for I think it was like a nine year old and eleven year old or something watching my kids. You know what I mean? And I went round seeing it. And as I was leaving the house, him and her pulled up in the taxi with our friends. And they got out mouth and off while well, I fucking <coughs> battered him. And I pushed her, but obviously when I pushed her, she fell out and cried. And him, I fucking bust his face up and that. Yeah. And that's how I got locked up for that. Uh, I got two and a half years for it. I was in court with her. Uh, I, I thought I would have been married, but it was a nasty charge. Um, I had... Section 18, wasn't Section it? Section 18. There's no weapons involved, was there? Yeah, circumstances, though, man. I know, I And I had, I had uh, complained uh, about her twice to the police for harassment. Yeah. And um, so I, so I ended up getting jailed for that. But uh, George Reynolds said I was going to get off of it. I think they got you a bit harsh with the Section 18. It could have been. Really? Section 20, one below. Yes, or but, uh, even a GBH. Yeah, George Reynolds, who he was with, he was a, a very well known. You were in Dolan player. Football Club, he was a safe player. Mm. George Reynolds, if you look at him. He's a millionaire guy. In a well, bit, of a not, bit of a naughty guy in himself, wasn't he? Nah, he was up for half a million pounds <laughs> roughly when he loaned on or something. He's, he's selling you, would be all right, you'll get off. Mm. So they're sitting in court, right? In the can eating, he's like, I sort of am. He knew me. And he went, uh, what are you up for, Gary? And I tell him, he went, you'll fucking work with that. I'm telling you now. Yeah. He went, they've gotten out on me, yeah. He says, I'm away now. He says, I'll see you when we're finished. <laughs> Next thing, fucking Gary Furby, I sentence you to... He was away, you, you had to walk down the stairs. No, no. <laughs> Gary Furby, two and a half, yeah. George Reynolds, Joe Gann, doing it now. They get three years, he got. And oh, you got three years. They, they met each other again in Ackleton Prison. <laughs> 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 so he was right, he said, you know, I'll see you later. I've seen him, he was in Ackleton. I've been Ackleton. <laughs> I was like, I didn't do it. I don't know what happened. I was fucking working. I don't know what Something happened there, didn't it? <laughs> I mean, it went on from there to Wilson and that. Like. did five months down there, man. Best Stossies ever. Get myself in the kitchen and get the Stossies. Mm. Yeah. Right. Big buns and peeing and buns. I was in a home, like, like, when I got San Juno, I went to home house because the room was on well. lockdown. And my cousin had a bed there for us. And it was on lockdown, so I had to go to home house. Like, uh, that's a naughty place, like, It yeah. is. I'd, Fucking, there's well, some nasty people there. I did two and a half years for street robbery. Stupid fucking story. I heard the guy was coming up with 100 pills. Got a long story short. I thought, I'll befriend that cunt. So I got around the corner of this fucking little park and I just whacked him. And it ended up with the wrong guy. The guy I was looking <laughs> for was like half a mile down the road. So as I whacked him, he dropped, he dropped about 280 or three pound in slummy. And change like so I fucking I sent him on his way and just fucking picked this up and said, oh, I'll get a kebab. So I got a kebab and the next day the fucking armed police come down my fucking house, boosted me door in, arrested me, let me out on remand and they 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 were doing me for the fucking robbery. It was section eighteen and then went to street robbery. Uh, for three quid. For three quid, yeah. And yeah. then they fucking turned around and I went to court. And my solicitor said, and my barrister said, oh, you get away with this. He said, just, just say... It's frowned know, upon that, though, because yeah, of the victim. It's violence. And I, within, I, he had a clean record and all that, you know what I mean? He'd never been in trouble. Mm. And that bastard played on it. He said, yeah. like, oh, he, I can't even go out over night time now. No, I throw my no, no. Yeah. Yeah. But I think um, Home House Prison, when you said there, uh, is rough because... Um, it's Help. probably about four mile outside of Middlesbrough, but obviously, I've lived in Glasgow at times. And, yeah. Um, I've you know grew up most of my life in Middlesbrough, and it is. Um, I mean, I'm I'm just on the outskirts now, looking in on the madness, but it is a it is a bad place, and um, maybe it's summer in the smog, maybe it's some of the palmos. <laughs> Ackleton was crazy. full of fucking. You know, my next door neighbour in their home house had been in. I was on Charles it, on Bronson was in when you were. Charles in. Bronson was in for the day. I had come in for the day. They put him on the ghost ship, the ghost train, you know, to break his spirit. Yeah, diesel yeah. yeah. therapy. He come up yeah. and he was getting sent <laughs> at uh, Franklin. He was he goes at the end of my wing for one night. And um, ninety three it was when I was in there. There was mm. this guy next door to me. I was coming off a visit. It opened in ninety. There was this guy come yeah. down. Little guy, 
hair, like Harry Potter, that's what I don't picture him. He looked like, yeah. He looked young as hell, like a kid. And I was like, all right. And he was like, I went, oh, get me cat day. Cat day, I went, how long have you been anyway? And 33 years. Yeah. Jesus. I was, when he looked about 15, this kid, and I was 16, I was shut up, man, 33, yeah. He went, look at him, I showed his things, I was fucking killed his family or something. He chopped his wife's head off and went shopping with her head in the bag, as you do. As you do, like, <laughs> say, say, say that slowly, he chopped his wife's that head off. That was another guy, I do what? Another chopped guy. his wife's head off, put her head in the bag, and went shopping. shopping with his, went shopping with his mum's yeah, head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His wife? Uh, Middlesbrough. No, Discount. <laughs> it's normal, eh? Discount. <laughs> Did I? I was on exercise and there was this guy. Tall guy, grey hair, he's just in space, walking. Scary thing he was, looking at him. Didn't really have much conversation. And the screw was like, yeah. Uh, he chopped his wife's head off, put in the shopping bag and went out shopping. Okay, yeah. Okay. in the bag. So that's the type of people I was in with, like, on, mm. on my thing. I had this guy called John. Um, He was reckons he was an IRA bomber, terrorist. Mm. Uh, he rigged himself up to the bed, him. He's kept under the bed in front of his pad yeah. for the fucking but meet, to come um, in. <coughs> you think they'd get done in, but you know what? They've got a lot of fucking power, haven't they? They've got yeah. a lot of well, you, You'll know this, uh, Peter. Um, you will as well. Uh, Sean will pop my... But you, you, don't you learn some amazing things in prison? Oh, yeah. Like, Survival like, um, skills. Like tying strings and putting them along and shotting them. Shooting uh, the lines. lines. Yeah. People chopping matches in half, and you'd sat there thinking you'd learn so much, don't you? Yeah, it's like, it's like, it's there's a lot of wasted like talent. Like in it? Yeah, is, absolutely. It? So creative, yeah. and you're just like, Jesus Christ. Uh, you do learn stuff, don't you? I, yeah, it's amazing. Making poor stags in your yeah. captain. And, yeah. yeah. I did five months in Walton, five months in Ackington, Morpeth, Northumberland. Yeah. And I did, I finished off in um, <coughs> Home House, Dr. Ronsies. Yeah. But Ackington was the best because I got in the kitchen. I like the big stotties, but I like the place because at the time you could have like your own duvet and a walkman bringing in. I like it. You open your window and that, and like you know, you see the grass and it's like there's no bars on the window yeah. and all like that. Was all right, Ackleton, one of Yeah, I like that. People said it was rough, like, but I didn't see the rough side. It was, it was dirty when I was in. It was dirty. Mm. I had a job in the kitchen as well. Like I she get a full English every morning. Oh, yeah. You had to serve the nonsense, but so what? I didn't care. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I swapped them. I was, there was there was cooks once, man, spat and all the sandwiches. <laughs> I <laughs> gave to the nonsense and they fucking rubbed it out and they gave it to their wing. <laughs> so I was serving all the help people. I used to die up the, like, the knives they'd give you, you know what I mean? They had big numbers on them and you'd ask for your fucking ID to get them. Big tag guy. on them and everything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Did you get a pillow in UK prisons? Um. No, not really. Well, they have nowadays. I think they have a mattress. Well, as the pillow built in. Mm. I haven't. No, I had a pillow when I was you in. Had a pillow. Have you? Mm. I, I haven't been pillow. in trouble for fucking ten years, so mm. I wouldn't know how. Mm. Ever since I've been home, I've never been arrested. I've had an eighty pound fine for having no seatbelt on, and that's it. Mm. So, what was your routine in prison? Then were you training? Nah, not until about three weeks before I got out. Yeah. To be fair, do you know what I've done? I fucking, it was a break. For, I know, it's, it sounds silly. It's not a good thing to do in the jail. <coughs> I've done what I've done and I regret it. It was a pure mistake, but it was a bit of a break for us. Like, for the first over jails, it's a bit like a holiday camp, isn't it? Because I had such, had such a hectic, busy life outside beforehand. Yeah, so, and time need, to chill. It was a chill out, right? Nobody uh, could get a hold of you unless it was a letter. Yeah. Nobody could get a visit, like, visit unless you issued a visit. And nobody could ring you unless you rang them. Yeah, exactly. So it was like a bit of a time out, really. Like. Mm. The other gym there, it's only a small gym. I went a couple of times. I think really, I just, well, it's from a couple of brothers, Cole brothers that were called from Newcastle. They asked me to go and just like spot them. Mm. And they said, look, they might be getting some trouble for these, like a guy from Sunderland. Can I have the back and the fucking. Was one of them Tony Cole? Tony Cole. Um, He's the one who shot Lee Duffy. Danny First Cole. Time. From Blag, where uh, he's, he was arrested, obviously. I shot him in the foot. Tony, the, knee, the first time. Yeah. Yeah. Tony Cole, Anthony Cole. It was uh, that's a factual because I've read all that. I was in jail when that one. It was back in for uh, he shot, shot, shot Duffy in December yeah. the twenty seventh, nineteen ninety. Obviously arrested. From Blythe. Put on yeah, put on remand. Another one, Palmer as well. Palmer, that's who I was in with. Yeah, that's him. And uh, obviously Lee Dad and 
everyone. You know, I'm going to tell you about tomorrow. But um, you tell me. <coughs> do you know something? Does he have a Does he have a brother who's like, like salt and pepper? Or? He was younger than him. He was blonde, blonde. Yeah, yeah. Um, tell me that was in jail. But um, piercing you know, blue eyes. Too. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because uh, it's funny actually because I was talking to um, pretty big. I was talking to Neil Booth and um, it was Duffy's best mate. It's um, a small world, and he, isn't he, it? he basically... <laughs> well, <laughs> well, <laughs> Duffy was in the magistrates the same time as they were up and they literally walked past each other. And, uh, you know, if he'd have seen him, then... Yeah. The, uh, but it's funny you should say that because what you just said there about prison being kind of... You can relax and be quiet. I spoke to Chris Lambriano, I was going to do his book, and he said, you know something? He said, even though I've done 15 years... He said, I miss it, because once that door closes, there's 600 people, no one's interested, and it's, you've got your own time, and, so, and yeah. now I'm out, and I've got cars, I've got responsibility. Sometimes I feel like going back. Nah. And I, obviously, you've, do you know what I mean? It's, Best thing is to escape the country, say that, yeah. do you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I slept half by time, but we kept on getting these, that, that's all he called them, them got me right. temogesics, twos and fours. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what can yeah. I feel not asleep? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> yeah, spent all his commissary money on brownies. <laughs> <laughs> One day, literally ate like fifty brownies. No, I was in America. Days. That in America, yeah, yeah. I was in Atkinson. You got paid twelve fifty for being in the kitchen. It was a good fucking way. Well, it was a fucking ten hour now, was it? <laughs> we just went to <laughs> <laughs> eleven quid, ten, eleven quid, or something. Like that. Oh. You get stutty every day, and you'd get like a fucking. Cook your own breakfast. Aye, fucking lovely, like you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. I had Charlie Towns, me, having fucking battered fish under the roast here, isn't that? <laughs> Get the fish out and stick the fish out, yeah. <laughs> so, what made you become an unlicensed fighter in your 20s? And what belts did you win now? Um, what happened was, was for the pro boxing and that. And there was just like Steve Ray asked us to the, the fight in London on old Joey Pyle, like Joey Pyle scene on his shows. Um, when I did it, there was there was more money involved in it. It was and big at the scene. It was around two thousand and five. It was Joe Pyle. Two thousand three to two. Alexander Palace. It was it was Dave Caldwell. Yeah. Joe Pyle's he a big promoter. I've heard of his name. His dad, My father was um, a big there's, promoter. There's two, yeah. Joe died in two thousand seven, but there's young Joe who's um he's doing he's, all that unlicensed stuff uh, now, isn't it? Some shit. But, um, I I used to be what you call out boxed on Joe Pyle's senior shows, and there was more money involved <coughs> in it. Yeah. In there. Uh, it was good. I've I've won the Royal Show belt on my third fight. Uh, Roy presented that. Roy presented it as I. I think yeah. boxers who've got promoters who've fought, we pay the we pay the fight as well. Won't we? The ones who aren't trying to make a fucking killing out with you. Mm. Right. There's but, a lot of different belts. Is there? Uh, yeah. You know, there's governor belts, but the the real ones. Um, was the Lenny McLean one and the Roy Shaw, Norman Buckland, yeah. and you actually won that belt, didn't you? That What's original the, one, the, the, Royal the, the Governor belt. Uh, the Governor belt. Are they right? heavyweight? Yeah, heavyweight. It's any weight, like, it's, and, and it's heavyweight, but any weight, really. Because I see some of your fights, you're fighting some lumpy guys, some big guys, like, you know what uh, I mean? Right? You're uh, not going to spark out, but they little, are for little for a heavyweight, wasn't I? Little for a heavyweight. Um, I never thought. I, I didn't look like. I didn't think you were heavyweight. I, I thought that just the governor thought you could come in at heavyweight. <laughs> but I, I'm thinking now, looking at your fights, you don't. You didn't. You, don't, you didn't look like a, a heavyweight. You know no, what I mean? Fourteen, fifteen stone. Well, when I had the burn up for the governor fight, that was uh, thirteen stone twelve. I come in at. I come do. I make like fifteen and a half stone. You fought someone twenty one stone once, and you were like thirteen stone. <laughs> Eric the Viking, I. As long as you can move away, were you faster than that? You as well, Lord. I fought, Lord, Lord, I fought Lan Leeds twenty four stone. Fuck you, eh? The tell us this year. You might as well have fought Brian Crop. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie the ring was tiny, man. It was a <laughs> tiny ring in a social yeah. club. And uh, me and Bernard O'Hagan went down in the social club in Leeds, and they went, "Oh, your guys are like, over twenty stone." And I was like, "Shut up, man!" Fucking. And they're pissing. I'm looking around. I think it's near one hour yeah, twenty stone. Like, Wind us up, you know. This kid, man. This kid was like, nah, jab out the hood. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, I guess in the ring now. <laughs> this fuck, he had four bellies <laughs> to come like that. I said, fuck, and that was like me. <laughs> Seriously, yeah. Seriously, I'm twenty seven still. He was literally new, but just wide. The ring was tiny, man. I can't, I couldn't run away from him. <laughs> <laughs> I swear, to God, I, swear to God, I got beyond points. I couldn't run away from somebody. You me? I I couldn't run away from him. Didn't have just calling you. You couldn't go anywhere. <laughs> Try jabbing him. He, he just went. He put his arms up like that, well, he had near neck, he was just... Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. 
fucking body shots just didn't even touch him. And fucking... Just settled him. <laughs> just couldn't take it out. And he just got a couple of steps. The ring was tiny. Not in the social club. Fucking boxes up. Robert, yes. <laughs> Right. <laughs> so did you have to come up with a new strategy for fighting people that big? Fucking hell. Don't I'm fight him. back. <laughs> <laughs> You're too big for me. <laughs> I'm ill. <laughs> I got paid well for it, like, but... After the fight, people got out there and went, yeah, mate, you've got some balls doing that. Like. <laughs> and when I didn't believe it, I didn't mm. believe there was anybody here about 20 stone, like 24 stone. Fucking never. You so mean Bernard, my coach, was like, what the fuck? I thought they were lying. Went, I thought they were lying. Do you think it'd be easy to beat, though? You could just think, ah, oh, just give a couple of body shots. <laughs> like, body shots mean? didn't fucking, it didn't affect him. And now, as soon as went through went, his first belly, second belly, but his third belly right. fucking... Shielded. And, and, and now when he went like that, when he went like that, he was just a big fucking donut, man. You, had to, <laughs> <laughs> you, couldn't, you couldn't hit his head, man. You couldn't hit him. I tried hitting him. I was like, what the fuck am I doing, Alex? So what about fighting Paul Venice? What was that like? And, and what's, what's his background? Paul Venice is a... Uh, well, Paul Venice fucking... I had a few fights and uh, I took the fight short notice. He was a young kid. Young kid, he was about 19 year old. Knocking everyone out, wasn't he? Um, he was flattening every cunt. And I took the fight to two days notice of something. Comes in, I was like, I know who poor Venice was. was like, mm. Went down, fought him. Uh, why, well, fucking nick a punch. I tell him. Yeah. I tell him. I think as well, well, he you has, sent, you sent, not, me, you uh, sent uh, me on the way here, you thought you were going to be. I thought I was going to be like Michael Watson. Or <laughs> you thought it was an axe in your head or something? <laughs> was like, <laughs> I was remember to this day, it was like, did I have you put like a cold a knife in the freezer? And imagine getting it through you. <laughs> and I was grabbing it like, and you feel it ice cold. That's what it felt like through my head. Um, and I think it was off. I'd had, I had, a, lot of, I'd had a lot of fights. <clears throat> I had two that week in Alice Summit as well. But it could have been the effects of that, but no disrespect to the man. The man has a, got a fucking lethal punch like and we went to war, um, and I was the only person I didn't know. Afterwards, I was the only person that got the distance with him. Like, you never like went the distance out. since. Knocked everybody out. In about 31 fights. No, he knocked everyone out. And I was, he even tell us, he went, you any cunt that went the distance for me. Mm. <laughs> 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 he went after that and made us realise and think, fucking hell. Respect that, like, though, wouldn't it? Yeah. Ah, we get on, we get on good, we get on, we get on, we get on men. And it's mad we've never seen each other for... 10 years? I've told 10, 12 years, and... No, he's Lee Duffy and I'm going to be Viv Graham in the, in the, in the film wow. Arch Rivals and it wow. was crazy I got a phone call saying Gary will you play Viv Graham aren't we are you cool with lines and all that or is, I don't know where it is with you used to be good on the lines but <laughs> <laughs> not the white lines <laughs> <laughs> sick of them no yeah. um, no the uh, uh, Acting thing, it's it's not about it's not about scripts like. Yeah, mm. uh, I mean me and Paul. It was funny because I I got a phone call for the fifth game, and I says who's who's playing <coughs> Lee Duffy, and then oh there's a lad from Middlesbrough. It's a ring of him. Uh, uh, Paul Venice. Was it Paul Venice? But yeah, I had a fight with him years ago. They went near here, and I did. I said it was on YouTube for years. Mm. And um, but Paul had to take it off when he turned pro K1. They went, Really? They went, How ironic is that? Like, I'm playing bad, Liv Graham and he's playing Lee Duffy, and we both shared the ring and mm. 12 years ago. So, like, wow. Then when he funded you, it was me playing Viv, he was exactly the same thing. And fucking, how mad is this? And um, we get on, we get on good. But as the, for the acting, it's like, um, you get tell the scenario and you've just got to go over it a few times. There's near lines, there's near lines to it, you just got to use your brain. I think it's just a small world, it's fucking crazy. Mm. I just mentioned a story there when I was in Ackenson about yeah. going to the gym with these guys, and I mentioned the guy, and like, he's like fucking mad, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Aye. Uh, mm. What about fighting Gypsy Jimmy McCrory? <coughs> Jimmy McCrory, I am. Um, was quite a good fight. Me and Jimmy were meant to fight a few years beforehand and never come off. Gypsies are generally good fight. Gypsies in Irish, especially Irish gypsies. It, uh, it was a fight that it was a fight everybody wanted to see. Yeah. Uh, and I'd never boxed for three years, and uh, Jimmy had been through his problems, like up and down through his problems. I mean, he's he's looking good now. He's he's got his health back to normal, and we're good friends, me and Jimmy. And uh, when we were boxing each other, um, some of the fans wanted, and we just got in there and done it. 
and we, we entertained the crowd and we set the place out. It was quite good, quite good. So, do you get the urge to fight now? I've been asked to fight. I'm now. Nah, I can't be bothered with it. I've, I've done that, and I come back again after two years, and I won the governor title, uh, which makes an official governor, me and Norman Buckland, um, and I won that other belt the day after the day day one. Um, uh, I've got nothing to prove, to be fair. Yeah. You know when to stop, don't I'm you? I'm 40 year old, I'm 41 coming up this year. If you carry on and carry on, you're going to start losing and losing. And all and that you as, you've done. And you can get hurt as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I noticed the last couple, five fights I had, training, I didn't enjoy training, man. I was fucking... It, 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 ruined, it ruined my life, to be fair. But when you're young, you don't feel it, do you, really? How uh, you, it, you didn't realise how much stress you kept yeah. putting on you. Training-wise, Jimmy, mm. yeah. And then fucking... What was it? I mean, the day before the governor fight, I, I, I was acting in my training and that, and I went out and got wrecked. Yeah. Which isn't a very good thing to do. I was lying in a bath in the morning, three hours sleep, with a shower blasting on us like that. Sending me mate to fucking Burger King and that. <laughs> <laughs> I was fighting for hours. Do you know what I mean? It's not, it's not, it's, 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 it's the stress and. We it's also it's like McDonald's and other burger places. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I want to get sponsored by like, McDonald's. And, uh, and after doing them two fights, I thought I'm never doing that again. Yeah, like. it's, um, it's a very unforgiving sport box. And so if your hat's not in it, then yeah. I've, I know. Um, I've done it to prove a point, that's what I've done it mm, for. Yeah. I didn't do it because I enjoyed it. In my last five fights, like, with Jimmy and uh, when I fought Hawthorne, Jimmy and Bentley, and then I come back and I fought for the governor and then fought Billy again. I didn't do it to enjoy it. I've done it because I thought I had to. You get a lot of professional minded people now. Uh, the last thing they'd want to do is go and fucking have a drink before a fight or even have sex and shit in it, you know what I mean? Aye. Well, that was opposite. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> rag what you want and drink what you want. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 I, I, and, and, and I've done them too. And then we last two fights, and people are like, How the fuck did you do that? I said, Well, I tell you, I did it. <laughs> <laughs> an agony like, but crippled, but I. No, no, I'm definitely not, definitely not going to fight anymore. So we had Stephen Sayers in here talking about the Newcastle crime family. Mm. And I'm helping them do their audio books right now as well. Mm. They should be coming out soon. What was their reputation like? Back in the day, and yeah, it's still yeah. now, still yeah, now. Yeah. Still never this year, as I've known uh, John Michael and Stephen for years. <coughs> um, the fucking, they had a right reputation, and they've still got a reputation. They ruled the roost, like, they ruled the roost. Um, for, there was a big member when they got out of jail, and Tony Sears come down and asked us to work the door. For them, for when they got out of jail, it's sugar. And I knocked it back because I was on that fucking, on, on that thingies myself, investigations myself. Yeah. And uh, when the fucking. Mix with the wrong company wouldn't do you any good, would it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just yeah, yeah, yeah. Years in jail and when they were sitting in the sugar nightclub, there was fucking loads of police who'd say, watching all sorts, everybody who went in. We, we made work the door, when Gary, it was unbelievable. He went, uh, the Surveillance. Sort of, uh, the, 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 all the ones, like, all so, the ones. So a lot of these big names are dead now. Viv Graham, Lee Duffy, Raul Moss. Yeah, Raul Moss. I used to work, I worked with Raul. He worked with Bu at Buicks, at times, cover shifts at Buicks and that. And he used to work at Robinson's, which turned into Liquid yeah. Envy. You used to call him Action Man, didn't you? Action Man, J.I. Joe and that, aye. Aye. Used to probably, used to probably have his life, you know. Was he a fighter or was he just a bit Not bad? really, was he? Not really, no. Bully. No. Bully. A mm. Bully. Um, you, you turn up with uh, combats on. Right, you used to turn up with tight black top on, right? Now black black combat boots and black combat pants and that. Fucking hell, like that. Oh, you used to go, fucking hell, he has J.I. Joe and that. Yeah. <laughs> 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 and, uh, ten, uh, year, ten years this month, you know, when he went on the rampage. Do you want to explain to people watching it who he is and what happened? Uh, do you know, <clears throat> it's funny because uh, I've just done. You shot yourself in Steve's book. Yeah. And there's a story yeah. in there about um, Steve Rafe being, get a being with first. Paul Gascoigne, like oh, during the day. <laughs> and uh, saying, Yeah, Gaza. Gaza was having his wobbles and he was saying, Look. And he was ringing Steve and he's saying, Right, just relax. I'll get Jimmy Five Bellies to come and see you. So this was during the day. So Steve went to. Um, he went to some kind of function, some Newcastle United do. And he didn't end up doing at the bar. On Sky News, Raul Mort has gone on the rampage after killing people, and Gaz has turned up with a fishing rod, chicken, and Steve Rafe's like, 
I was talking to him a couple of hours ago. And the thing is, um, Gaza was asking um, Steve Rafe about Ral Mort. So when he seen him on the telly, he was like, I can't fucking believe that. He was only asking me about him a couple of hours and he's turned up. Uh, obviously, Gaza said the next day he, can, he didn't even have any memory. He turned up with his dressing gown on. Um, obviously, he had um, mental health issues, but... Um, Gaza and Paul Gascoigne, Gaza, yeah, football yeah. player. Yeah, yeah. Paul Gascoigne's Gaza. Yeah, oh, right, right, right. Um, but um, to answer mm. your question, Sean, I dare say um, it's probably been the biggest manhunt the North East has ever seen. It's the biggest manhunt the um, the ever seen. He shot, <coughs> got, out, got out of Durham prison, yeah. was telling people his girlfriend got with another man. Mm. She he's, said that, didn't she? He's she telling people, to when I get out, I'm going to do this, going to do that. He should have been gate arrested. The warning signs were there. Um, he wasn't. Um, he was known to be abusive to women Yeah, as well. uh, he, he tortured a lot of his, his girlfriends. There's a way with one in the bar. And there's uh, lovely last Donna. And uh, he got with her when she was young. And he used to make her train constantly. Even though she was now on us, a beautiful woman. She used to make her train all the time and put her down and... But I, not a nice kid. And you wouldn't think that when you've seen him out mm. on the train or working with him. Sadistic. He had, a, he, had a, he had a dark side. Yeah, and um, he killed, basically, got out, shot his girlfriend. Um, she, 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 him, she survived, shot the boyfriend, walked over, shot him again. That, that finished him off. Uh, then he rang the police and said... This is the gunman from Berkeley last night. I'm hunting officers. Seen the police officer an hour later. Shot him. Landed him. I think he hung himself a few years yeah, later. Um, and then obviously he the ended run. up... He, he, he was on the run for a week. Uh, landed up in Rothbury. And the rest is history. Basically, you know... It's the most expensive Ten days. Was it ten days? History. Something like that. And literally... In the it was biggest massive. In British history. Ten, ten years this year. How did he die? Uh, himself, basically... He had a gun to his head for like hours. Um, and the police obviously wanted him alive. They were trying to reason with him. Um, I know someone who knows a hell of a lot about the case. And he said basically the police tasered him first. And that split second he knew and he basically shot himself. They rushed him to the hospital. But he, uh, he never right. recovered and he, and he died. Ah, they say the police wanted him alive. I bet half of them wanted him fucking dead. You know what I mean? Mm. Uh, of course, imagine it. Yeah. yeah. Didn't he kill one of their own? Kill us, sorry. Bro, bro. He shot the cop and blinded him. Yeah. yeah. And then I that, remember when that I guy remember killed him. himself. He killed himself a few years after. Um, his wife left him and he just basically struggled with life. Um, couldn't cope. Um, David Rathband, the officer's yeah. name was. And he hung himself about three years yeah, afterwards. Uh, very sad. Bloody terrible. Hell. And do you know the thing is? There was two lads helping um, Ral Moore, Moore out. In them two weeks when he was, he was them living. Got, them got Raul sentenced, didn't they? They got, yeah, well, listen, they got this, nailed. One got, got 20, one got 22, 23 years, and one, Carl Ness, got 40 years. Conspiracy, was it? But they were, like, they were helping him because they were, like, giving him sleeping bags and he was living in someone's greenhouse eating the tomatoes. Um, but that Carl Ness was something like... It was in his 20s yeah, yeah. 40 years recommendation yeah because so, he's dead in it so the, yeah, the they, they, get, they give them the sentences and, uh, you know was, <clears> it, was, was it worth it it's basically rude. he's ended his whole life being so stupid helping someone out they have someone's helping me I'd rather stay in the house and eat burgers not fucking mm. tomatoes in a greenhouse <laughs> 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 yeah. fucking tomatoes yeah. <laughs> so you were banned from Newcastle for six years how come ah uh, because when I got into jail I was working the door again, but I was working the door with Neil Badge, really, and uh, come on top, and, uh, and plus the police didn't like us and all that, so I had to fucking, I wasn't allowed to work in Newcastle for a few years until things got sorted and I was allowed it again after like six years. You couldn't get your badge after you'd been in prison, you mean, uh, Six years, I reckon. Five, what? is it? But I got six. If you, if you are convicted in racism... But Drugs or sex offences, then you'll never get it. Yeah. Gary was obviously was like, hey, sex offences, so he never got it. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah so, um, plus, with like police harassment and all that as well. Getting yeah. harassed off the police over the years and that. And the people start, because you got a name, do people try and fight you still? Like on the they streets? They did, I, they did, I. As soon as when I went back to Newcastle, fucking people were wanting to have a shot at us again because I'd been away for so long. 
And because, like I say, I wasn't a big fucking lump. Must have thought, you know, plus I was like, looking older and that, and fucking all, all that was shot. And then, all I can say is, you, 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 you stupid bastards. I know. Uh, <laughs> squared up again, I was sick every, every weekend, going, yeah, I'm covered in blood, man. My wife used to fucking mend that shirt. I was like, fucking when's this going to end? I had about six or seven weeks of that, like, constantly, like. Better to stay in and get a drink in. <laughs> I've, uh, Start trolling people. Mm. I didn't. Okay. I didn't get so much of that now. Like <laughs> mm. it's all right now. I've, I keep a quiet life myself for many years now. And your plans for the future include writing a book with Jamie. Uh, I will. Uh, I've been asked to write a book over the years, and I'm gonna. I want to write a book. And yeah, yeah. Me and Jamie spoke about it, and it's something I'm gonna do. Uh, hopefully, get it started by mm. when do you reckon it's gonna be like Christmas uh, just after something. Well, I've got um. Once I'm doing, I'm just doing my 17th at the minute in like three, uh, three months. And uh, well, I've just finished the Paul Sykes one. Um, Once Upon a Time in Teesar, which Brian told you about yesterday. Yeah. Uh, Train the Brian Cockerell way, which you can have a copy of, you know. Um, and then, to, to be honest, I'm trying to, um, I'm trying to get away from Teesar now because James English said to me the week, he said, Jamie, you've completed it and it's so close to home. So even though, like with the Lee Duffy ones, I left so much out thinking, well, hang on a minute, their family are going to read this. I used, I'm quite tactful. Um, but so you're going to go like Butterway or Glasgow? Um, you're close to the border, aren't you? Newcastle, Widnes, um, and, you know, I want to be Glasgow, I want to be London, I want to just expand. Yeah. Because um, I've done a lot of books in Middlesbrough. Um, you boxed it off really, haven't you? Yeah, the road, yeah there's yeah. nothing really else to do. Um you know, and um, as I said, you someone always gets upset, and you know, I mean, last year when the um, <clears throat> when the Lee Duffy documentary out, there was, I mean, you get the trolled, I get the trolled, yeah. um, I get told since I've grown my hair, I look like a lesbian, which I get. Oh, that fat lesbian! There's a guy, and he must have made about six accounts to tell me I look like a fat lesbian. So if you're watching, <laughs> He's got just, a I see your point. Mm -hmm. add, my, add me on your normal account and we'll go for a drink. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. do, you know, do you know what? It's like... He's my woman, fuck her off. Yeah. It's like... <laughs> it's like <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, I'll talk about it, obviously, another podcast, but, like, my wife started getting threatened, my kids have started oh. being threatened. That's when it comes to that. Uh, yeah. There's one failed author um, who goes around just sabotaging everyone I work with. Um, yeah, well, when I love my youth. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, and it's, people basically message me to tell me they hate me and they've never met me. Yeah. Getting messages from people at five o'clock in the morning from Bournemouth. And uh, I don't have the there, was, there was one guy last year and he, he was messaging saying, uh, oh, Jamie Boyle's this and he's that and he's a sexual deviant and a rapist and all this. So I was like, I tracked him and I was like, where are you getting this from? And he's like, well, I've heard. And, and I was like, wow. Do you know what I mean? I'm just staggered. What's wrong with being a sexual deviant? <laughs> So, you know, all I'm going to say is, like, you know I, mean? I hope no one grasses me up when I die. <laughs> <laughs> as, long but, uh, as long as they're over 18. Yeah. But um, <laughs> honestly, it's, you know, sometimes when the wife says to me, Jamie, go get a job in Tesco if you can't handle it. Because anything in life worth doing, it's going to come with, you know, you, you, you must get it. If you put yourself it. out there, you're going to have to yeah. accept it. Yeah, so uh, just, we, we kill the trolls with kindness, though, don't we? Yeah, that's what yeah. Steve, Steve Rafe said to me. If you turn around and start with my wife, though, you fucked up. Yeah. She could kick the shit out of yeah. me. You might as <laughs> well keep, keep on trolling me, you know what I mean? Wild woman. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, no, this, one, this is like just my normal wife. Yeah. Wild woman, she was just fucking off on her day. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> do, do you know what? It's a society we live in. Yeah. And listen, it's the 21st century. Um, Get a life. These podcasts, people go crazy for them. Time. Yours, in James English's, people, the massive numbers, people want to just lay on a Sunday and just, I do it, I watch them just most nights and, you know, people say stuff on YouTube and you're just like, Jesus Christ. I know. troll him. When he's down south and he's doing his Epstein and all that bullshit, mm. I'm like that. You're going to get killed. The Queen's going to send someone yeah. for you've you. Got to have, you've got to have a really thick skin. And I said that with Gary. I said, listen, people are going to come out of the woodwork if you've done any any bad, um, you know, and you're going to get it. You oh, know, J James, Josh Warrington, nicest man in the world. Um, Steve Rafe gets it in abundance. Um, James English, them three. I've had so much um, 
so much advice off him and they've said well you know and like Josh Warren is how could you not like him how could you not like Ricky Burns and and they get it on a daily basis and you're like do you know what I mean it's just like wow it defies human belief some, of the, some of the stuff that you get sent yeah I used to fucking at first I got mad and I'd, I'd, try, I'd find the IP addresses I want to go kill them mm. but then now I'm just like yeah I'm very sorry if my way offend you um, mm. I'm trying to lose it and at the end of after a while, if you'd be nice to like, well, we might have been a bit hard. Yeah, with you. yeah, yeah, so yeah. So it's just sort of like, you know. Yeah. I'm, I'm kind of sorry boxing. too. People are calling out, calling out the fight and all that. And yeah. I try to come back and I've done the fights I had. And then people call you again to come out. And like, people say to me, like, your girlfriend, and my wife, and that was like, how many times can you keep coming back to shut people up? Best mm. just can, right? Well, I didn't I, even really realise this, but on the way here, there's this failed off who hates me. Because his book flopped and man's, you know, I'm doing what I'm doing. And uh, he said to me, no way. He messaged me wanting to fight me. And I was like, so this is the this is the temperament of people. Do you know what I mean? You're too little to be the cover that. <laughs> you, know, do you know what I mean? So it's just like. Look me up. <laughs> look, this fight was terrible. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> it, 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 yeah. that, it, that's people's lives. Them people, Peter, Sean, they don't even like themselves. No, do, do you know what I mean? Cry for help. <laughs> Josh Warren has said, Jamie, you know, and it's like. I've sat and listened to them, Steve Rafe, James English has been a massive help. Uh, so I used to get down. And last year when I did um, I did the Lee Duffy documentary, um, I've been in the middle of papers 11 times in fa three years. Um, so obviously people say, oh, fat dickhead and all this. So when I've been in, I, I must have read comments. And a lot of my books are support registered charity at the Bradley Lowry Foundation. Yeah. I pay them monthly in there. And uh, there was about 350 comments and 250 of them are bad. And I was reading comments That's actually from, from, drug, <laughs> from drug dealers and crack dealers, heroin dealers, scum of the F, biggest pieces of shit's walk. And, and I was reading these comments and people who I thought liked me were like, oh, yeah, he's terrible, him. And I was just like... Hey, envy, I mean? envy as well. Do you know what I mean? But th that's what I mean. It's like out there and people are like, you know, people just hate you for you no let reason. it go right over your legs. You know, but that's, it comes with kind of... <laughs> do you know what I mean? It's, you know, I just think fucking... Yeah, just yeah, go over you your head. You know, you know who your genuine friends are, and you know who the ones I click. It's yeah. a shock to your system, I think. So, how did you first? Um, obviously, you know, you were quite bad with it. What yeah. were you were like, Sean, when people were saying. Right, in the beginning, you have an emotional reaction. Yeah, because I've had days where I've been in bed, just for days. Yeah, yeah. So, and then yeah, um, yeah. over time, you learn that nothing is going to be successful without these people. The most watched video on this channel has got 5.6 million views, mm. 35,000 likes. 10,000 dislikes mm. and I had to disable the comments because they were so bad, bad. Mm. but it's that controversy and that interest because like your fans right they see those negative comments they come and put other comments on those comments supporting you mm. and YouTube says ooh people are interested in this video and then they provo promote it to more mm. places. So the trolls actually help you get viral. Uh, yeah, that's what um, Brian said. There was a guy called, uh, he told it yesterday, so I'm not going to go over. But Oscar Wilde, I read a lot of Oscar Wilde, and there's a, there's a quote, I'm into my quote to me, and it, he said, there's only one thing worse than being talked about, and it's not being talked yeah. about. Yeah, it's true. And, uh, you know, Paul Sykes' sister, and I've got this this book, it's going to be a um, multi-million film next year. Supposed to start this year, COVID, God and COVID-19. So have that trolls. <laughs> yeah, put, um, <laughs> put it, but it is going to start. Um, and Paul Sykes' sister was in the book, put loads of things on, and, and I was like, wow. And, um, you know, it's, it's she was for it a few years back, and now it's kind of, do you know what I mean? It's like, it's, um, but, you know, a lot of people in Wakefield, that's where I got the first dislikes from, because um, obviously you, you, Watched Paul Sykes at large the other day for the first time. Yeah. And you did you discover that character? I was just blown away yeah, by because that that documentary alone, after three years of talking to people about Wakefield, <clears throat> I used to work on a building site. And the first person I ever met after like six, six months, I went to him, yeah, and where are you from? York tracks and he went way further. I went, fuck off. Really? And I was obsessed with Paul Sykes for three years. And uh, after three years, 2015, I said, you know what, old man beer, I'm going to do this myself. And I walked into a book, walked into the documentary, met everyone, Delroy Showers, 
And uh, and that's what, you know, Ricky Gervais, Robbie Williams, Jamie Carragher, the League of Gentlemen, they've all bought that book. Um, yeah. Obviously, that was a post. I didn't even know I was going to be on today. So <laughs> that's why I wore this. But, um, you know, it's, it's a fascinating character because here you have a man who, you know, university lecturers couldn't have held the torch to his education, but he was like Lee Duffy. He just had a passion for yeah, going yeah. around punching people's lights out. And uh, you're Check obsessed with Duffy, yeah, Sykes, aren't you? I mean, that's Duffy how. And Sykes, aye. Yeah, it's like, I'd like to understand what goes through their head. What makes somebody like that? What, why did Jack, you can the, why did Jack the Ripper go around <clears throat> killing the people? No, I like people like that because you can connect them. Yeah, connect and you know, them obviously, sort of Sean, of you have the, the true years. crime. Yeah. You, you're a good guy. Sean's got multiple degrees, but he's yeah. fucking evil. I'm the innocent you know, one. Look at his face. Boy yeah. next door. <laughs> Shane Taylor was the other day. He was a bad guy. Found good. So there's all Brian Cocker was a bad guy. Now good. So there's always that message. Of, the good guys, but they're still not the you know fuck what? out of you, by why, the way. Why, why is Duffy? <laughs> Do you want to turn the other cheek? Duffy has been dead at 26 before he reached his prime. He'd have been 55 last month. He should have been a dad. Should have been a granddad. He's pushing up flowers in Essen Cemetery. There's no life. There's a guy. He should have had everything. Paul Sykes should have had everything. He lived by the He died in the gold. Well, that was his favourite saying. Um, you know, and you know, Roy Shaw. Oh, they're all being bullied. You were bullied. Nah, bullied Cockrell was bullied. Dominic Negus was bullied. So they, they all become a product of their own environment. Yeah. Um, and it's a scary, scary thing. Um, but you know, it's it's um. Why Sometimes the bully becomes the bully, don't the, the person that's bullied becomes the bully. Well, Duffy's a classic, classic, classic yeah, example. Um, and I'll tell you all about him. Obviously. Drugs don't help people. I mean, like, the crack will make you paranoid and shit. Yeah. If you're already a bit of a loon anyway, you have fucking a load of crack and that's it. You don't give a flying fuck, well, do you? You know, I put in the book, um, I think I worded it as something like um, boxing, athleticism, probably having an underlying mental disorder and cocaine are a deadly mix. You know, so when he's been out on crack all night, he'd be going to nightclubs, paranoid, and he'd be thinking, right, yeah. and he'd be punching five bouncers. And, you know, there was times in Duffy's life when he had nothing in his life, no money, no clothes, but all he had was that name in Middlesbrough. And there was no social media. He was a celebrity. He was, everybody knew who he was. Right. Um, that book I'll give you out there, The Hall of the Moon, it starts off with, I believe in Santa Claus till I was, um, hang on, what was it? I believe in Santa Claus till I was nine. I'd heard of Lee Duffy when I was eight. So I grew up in Middlesbrough and I knew of this man, Lee Duffy. Before Santa Claus. We owned the town of Middlesbrough before fairy tales. So I grew up and, you know, when he was, when I was 11, he died. And I will never for the rest of my life forget the feeling Middlesbrough was in a state of shock because this young lion, this young kid, had put the town through so much turmoil, chaos, mayhem. Um, that was and Viv got shot. Yeah, yeah. And it's, oh, you know. That. They were having parties as well. well they, they, were, they were having literally street parties, you know, at the Queen's yeah. Jubilee. Um, yeah. It's crazy, but, but that's a fact. Do you know, and I've, I've found some stuff out in facts and I've. I thought, Jesus. You'd have a little bit of hate them. Yeah, yeah. Anyway. Do you know, but listen, whether you whether you loved him, whether you whether you loved him, you'll never forget that man's name. And either way, he's written his name in folklore. Um, you know, the experts say after sixty years, everyone's dead. Unless you're John Lennon, Kirk Cobain, you're dead and you forgot about. But certainly, in my lifetime, you know, my grandkids will speak of the name Lee Duffy, yeah. Viv Graham, mm -hmm. Paul Sykes. You when, know, when, Delroy Showers. Um, I remember when Viv got shot. I was just a kid. Then you can remember, even for like three or four <coughs> years, there was just a dead and I'm talking. From where I live, you can look out to mm -hmm. Newcastle as well, and it was just silent for mm -hmm. years. There was a, there was a, there was like a, a, an eerie a, silence. An eerie silence in the air. Yeah. Uh, and I, I, I'm talking. Well, how old have I been? I would have been thirty. Nineteen ninety-three. Well, because he was shot. 30, 30, um, Fourteen or something. And if for, if a kid made it that age, and just to hear the name for all them years, mm. and then I left. Because we were on about you and I don't remember when it, when it happened. Mm. Yeah. I said it was just like a, It was New Year's Eve, 93. A couple of days, right? So the chance... Crazy, isn't it? The chance when it was going through the Newcastle Grey Flowers... Well, we were talking about it. Viv no more yeah. for 94. Uh, the dealers were having parties. Um, I think I said it in the Lee Duffy documentary. The experts say that notoriety in itself is a form of success. So people say, oh, well, Duffy didn't have the money. He died with £60 in his pocket, and that was lent of someone six hours before. Um, lent? 
Borrowed. Oh, yeah. not took. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, it was actually, it was borrowed off oh. a friend. 100 quid, he had £60 left. Um, when, his, when his belongings were given, the, his mother tried to give it to the guy who gave me it. It was soaked in blood, and he was like, no. Um, you know, but I've, I'm doing the Duffy documentary next week, um, and I, that I've, I've got his last victims, I've got police. Yeah. You know, and he, he was literally a one-man crime wave. Um, and but I haven't glamorised him, but... Listen, why is the people like me, Steve Rafe, Kay Cray, Bernard O'Mahony, you write crime books on Escobar, these characters are real life. And many people in Wakefield would rather do the ostrich trick and bury the head. Or Paul Sykes is the most notorious, biggest character to ever come from Wakefield. I think there's him and Jane McDonald are the most famous people. Sykes is going to be massive next year. I remember when he came to Newcastle and I didn't know it was him. He was there. Paul Sykes was when um, the door team, it was a, remember the door and the icon? Mm. What year was that? It was 98, 99. Yeah. And he come up because they brought, they brought the change to fame from Leeds. Mm -hmm. That's right, yeah. All right. And there was a guy come up and we did now, I was like young. Yeah, doorman walls back then. Uh, it was families, really. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. Great icon. Because as well, there was these. Coloured fellas on the door. Yeah. Big fellas. And they were, they were just doing the job and just not putting them on any shit. They took, they took the normal door team out, brought somebody in from another area, mm. Lakes of Leeds. So there's no favours. Stamp things out. And these lads were getting grief off certain families. So they brought Sykes in. John Spencer told me the exact same story for one and, of the uh, And when <laughs> I was reading the book, and mm. I was like, yeah, I remember that. Mm. They brought... They was, yeah. um, because it got out of hand, yeah. and he come up mm. and fucking rounded the people together who, who were causing trouble and got them told. You got crazy people everywhere. Mm. And, uh, and I was telling people that, they were like, mm. maybe I went, I remember that, I was just mm. round the corner. But Sean, you've written, you written your books like on your, your bad guys. How do you, because I get it all the time, or oh, you're writing people, you're, writing, you're, you're bringing people up who we should forget about. You've done your books on your, your Escobars. There's a few other criminals you've done as well, isn't there? And uh, listen, you should forget these people, but you know, true crime is you go in Waterstones. Um, you know, when I released that book two years ago, Middles of Waterstones said to me, um, that you know, I mean, one, one other shop said to me, we had 30 books nicked a month in the first month. So I don't know what kind of people Jimmy Boyle's bring into the shop but but you know what that's the most that's the the busiest genre genre i don't know how to pronounce that name um well they're robbing you then you know, you pay fucking pennies so <laughs> so they do the they're really the night i shouldn't be saying i should but they're a night <laughs> supposed to pay every 90 days but it's like six seven months sometimes yeah you gotta fuck it uh, up but if you want to make it in this game you've got to just you know um but um, but they said, listen, that book was walking out of the shop. It was just crazy. Middlesbrough went mental. People were phoning me on a daily basis, threatening me, gangs, Duffy's enemies, all this. And then they were taking turns, rah, 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 passing it to him. And I thought, you're not fucking bullying me. Do you know what I mean? But listen, it's 29 years ago, I was a primary school kid. You know, unless you go back into town and change what went on, you haven't you know glamorised I mean? it. You no, haven't lied shit. about it. So yeah. they've got fuck all to say, really. You know yeah. what I mean? It's a good, but, um, interesting story, isn't it? Yeah, the but, but, but you know, I, I, I often, read, most nights, I watch Jack the Ripper documentaries. If I'm in London, I'll do the walk. True crime is, you know, it, it's, it's it's human nature. Oscar Wilde said, why crime is um, vulgar. People will always, you know, and people, even when Jack the Ripper killed Annie Chapman, his second victim, this is true, this. The next door neighbours were charging a penny to get people in to look at the murder site. Yeah. This is just human nature. So when people are saying to me, oh, you've got to do Paul Sykes, you've got to do Brian Cockerell, there's been loads of books I've knocked back and thought, that's a bit step, step too far. Uh, Paul Venice, who's going to play Lee Duffy, Aye. he was getting um, mes many messages saying, you can't do it. And I, I was like, hang on a minute, hang on. This is, this is a chance yeah, for you to change your life. This that. is your chance to become a professional actor. If I got a call tomorrow saying, play a paedophile in a film I'd jump at it do you know what I mean so this is a chance for this you're going to get some trolls on that <laughs> yeah <laughs> bloody hell big, big. this is the Prince Andrew Epstein <laughs> <laughs> Oscar Wilde also said um, 
The British public will never be interested in your art until you have a sex scandal. Yeah. How's that working out with Prince Andrew? <laughs> yeah. Have you called Prince Andrew? I yeah. love the royal family. The Queen's age. Do you know, and I've used a quote like that on Paul Sykes. <laughs> because, believe it or not, Sean, um, I've been at the prisons to visit his son. I've been to stay with his wife. You've seen the documentary. Um, people like Callum and Lanston. Pe- 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 people well. say, was he a prison rapist? Have you heard the stories? Sykes. No. I didn't hear that one. Yeah. yeah and I've went and I've spoke to the police, right? I've been in the prison. I've been to visit people. And they said, you know, if you sat with our dad now, he used to openly admit he used to have sex with men. It's just something he did to get in a... But did he club him over the head and drag him in the cells? I spoke to a top-ranking Wakefield police officer about two, three weeks back, and I said, listen, we seen his DBS check, or it was. It was 200-plus. There was not one sex offence, but that's what people say. Oh, he was a nonce, he was a rapist and all this. I'm looking at facts. This last book I've done, yeah. I've went in and I've spoke to factual people, and he never was convicted of anything. Uh, I spoke to many people who said, listen... Behave or put him with Sykes, and and that went on, you know. And he was a monster, a big scary bastard. You've got Paddy Maloney in tomorrow. Uh, he was, you know, he was a young YP. Behave or Sykes is going to come down and bum you. And, and it was all prison grave farm, which was built. You know, did he manipulate people and talk people into having sexual favors? Probably, yeah. But did he actually rape people? Then there's no evidence to suggest nothing like that. No. Listen, I spoke to Chris Lambiano. He was living next door to Paul Sykes for three years in 1973. He said, Jamie, if anything went on like that, he wouldn't have been allowed to walk with us, the Ronnie Benders, the Eddie Richardsons. I'd want to see paperwork for you know, I've spoke, I've sat for hours with the, um, the venerable Del- Delroy Showers, um, former Liverpool crime lord, and he, said, and he gets the same as well, you know, and he, he's like, nothing like that went on. Do you know what I mean? So looking at the facts, and, you know, we can all hear you say, no. but no, nothing went on like that. So there is some people do get it and probably write and show like Purple Aki. Yeah, yeah. He's um you know, he's part of he he will outlive his life, that name. It's yeah. it's in folklore. You is know, there's safety? people since I've done the Duffy books, there's people making songs. Um, you know, there's 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 a band who's released one the other week on BBC, Sykes, the film, there's other people um Does the family get loyalties for that or royalties? Um, well, I, do you know with the with the Duffy books, I pay a charity. Um, it started off with Scope. Um, no, not you. I know you give your contribution, but does I mean, the film? Like, no, the ones that are like making songs and that's no. No, because <clears throat> listen, here's a fact, right? If I wanted to, once you put yourself in the limelight, if you become famous, or you'll know this, famous or infamous, you were in the limelight. If I wanted to write a book tomorrow on David Beckham, there's not Donald Trump is the most powerful man in the world. He couldn't stop a book being written about him. Well, if I wanted to write a book tomorrow about Trevor the Plumber from Middlesbrough, he could legally, because he's a Joe Public, Aye. but once you become... I thought they had to be dead, me or fucking... No. Can copy you can't copyright facts if yeah. the person is famous. Ah, right. Yeah. You know, I could write a book about any... Well, you know, anyone who's been famous, infamous, then, you know, it's, it's you've got your right, yeah. you know. It's a fact, you know. He's already done books before. He's boxed for British titles. He's he's been on crime documentaries. You're there. There's no, people out there slagging me off, and there's probably not a, a great deal I can do about it. I don't know about having sex with men, but I used to do, like them down Thailand pieces. Ladyboys. Oh yeah, Lady man. Boys, There's some beautiful ones out there. Oh, gorgeous, man. <laughs> Is there, is there anything you'd like to say? Um, <laughs> Peter, Peter, your book gets better and better. Well. <laughs> is there anything you'd like to say, Gary, to the people watching this video and like how they can contact you and stuff? And, and, and just contact James us well. on Facebook or through Jamie Boyle. I'll we'll put all the links in the description box for these yeah, guys. Yeah. Yeah. His phone number is... Just, <laughs> yeah. gonna, um, just we're going to make a, a, um, a Facebook page. A it? page, which is all my business pages. If I do any kind of documentary, I make, obviously me and you'll do one. Yeah. And that's, you know, to build it up. And by the time the book comes out, there'll be 4,000 on there too. I want to buy it. It's just building it up. So we're going to do that this week. Uh, so if anyone wants to contact Gary, um, you know, I didn't realise he was actually... Uh, I spoke to Steve Rafe the other month, and I've never really followed unlicensed boxing, but for in that field... For what he did, it was quite. He did, you know what I mean. It was like being all over the country. Like. Yeah, you know, and he's um, he's, he's a well res- well respected, and to to fight the people he's at short notice and bare knuckle, um, you know, it's it's quite an achievement what he's uh, done. Do you know what I mean? But yeah. he's not actually full of himself. He's not someone who says, you know, well, Brian's first book. Someone sent me the week. 
every page he knocks 10 men out you know the second one <laughs> sorry Brian if you're watching but um, you know but the second one I what did, we like on this channel isn't it yeah the second book is basically redemption I'm not uh, one of and, them and realist and you know give yourself them yourself yeah that's just, what you know right. and um He's quite likable, do you know what I mean? So I've done I've done what I've done and that's it at the end of the well, day. Well I think it makes it more achievable is the fact that you're not a big heavyweight, but you've been knocking these lumps out here and fucking everywhere. Yeah, you know right. I mean? But I so think and I don't go and boasting about it. No. It's only been lately, like over the last couple of years, people have been asking us to do stuff like so this and all that, and I'm just talking right now that well, right the so. time's right, I'm 40 year old now, and I'm not going to be doing You need to book out, you know what I mean? You've nah. lived a good life, you know what I mean? Nah, I've got a lot of stories to tell, and I, I'll, I'll tell them, I'll tell them how it is. I have mean, you Peter. turned to Jesus as well? Huh? Have you turned to Jesus? No, no. I haven't done that yet either. <laughs> yeah, yet. But, you know, I mean, Peter, you know, I've, I've read you, um, it's not so bad on Twitter because. People have got half a brain. You've got to be cultured and you can have a bit of conversation on Twitter. Instagram's quite harmless, but Facebook and YouTube's evil. It's and the stuff I, I said, I get it here, there'll be comments. Do you know what I mean? So I'm yet to get it. I love but, but, you, but you know what? Once you do your book next year, yeah. you'll, you'll get it. Do you know what I mean? But, oh, I've been getting it anyway, man. Do you know what I mean? But Brian, Brian Cockrell, he, um, he gets it really, really bad. But And I say to him, so I look for him, because I have my wobble some days when I, I'm in bed and I think, four, ten before enough for two days. I'm going to start trolling you, Brian, for a laugh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's funny, actually, because I put a gorilla suit on last night pretending to be him. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I can get away with it. I can be a bit cheeky to him. But, um, <laughs> but you know, and, it, and that's life, and I suppose... You know, like I said, there's lots of people, and you'll get it as well. And, oh, and, and you know, and it's—I mean, you never finish that question. How did you, ha you know, before we finish? How did you? Because you went to your wobbles and think, right, this is going to be me now. Anything about Shirley diverts? He'll go on to something else. Epstein. <laughs> <laughs> so the first criticism that I have of Shirley Diver is that she's so the first criticisms I got was on my Amazon reviews, mm. and I was heartbroken. I was a novice yeah. author. I yeah. read these reviews, and I was like, <gasps> <gasps> years later. When I rewrote Hard Time, I went right back to all the reviews that were negative. Mm. Thought, thank goodness that these guys have pointed out my flaws and incorporated all into the writing of Hard Time. So there's a grain of truth in mm. some criticism. You don't mind some, that, some's do you? mindless. You don't so mind. just makes it better, doesn't it? Yeah, exactly. You the can, fact you, you if you can take a little bit of the positive out of everything, it makes you more positive. Right. That's the thing, and then. Now it's been so long of all, of all the reviews and criticisms and everything, I'm just immune to it now. And I, I, some guests come on and they say, look, we don't give a fuck. Let them have a battle in the comments. And I'm like, yeah, because I know that'll make that video go yeah. more viral. Some guests come on and say, I don't want any negative comments. And I've got the moderators deleting everything. Mm. And those videos don't get as many views. Yeah. He's so got comments on his own. Though. He's got people all around the world who actually just sorted stuff out for him. Mm. I know people who pay now other people to troll them. Mm -hmm. To create more activity. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> it tweaks the algorithm. Yeah. Even Amazon, if you've got all five star reviews, they think that's your mates have just done that. They like to see a spread of reviews, including negative ones, mm -hmm. to promote your book more. Yeah. Brian said, you know, he said um, that the trolls he gets is like, you know, he said that grounds him. Do you know, it's like he doesn't mind. You know, but he get he gets some appalling ones and. Well, uh, you get the size of Brian, you don't give a fuck anyway. Yeah, you? but he, 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 he's, quite a lot thick, of he's quite thick. He's quite thick skinned. But <laughs> I, at first, I used to be like that, and he's like, "Oh, why don't you like me? I'm really a nice lad. Do you know what I, mean? I give to charity." Yeah. But uh, you just get to the point now where, what well, you know, there's a draw the line when you get my wife in. I just think, yeah, that. Do you know I just what I mean? Fuck it. All right, so uh, people watching this, then there's links in the description box. If you want to support the stuff, I'll put the author page for Jamie down there, Amazon, USA, Amazon, UK. He's got a shitload of true crime books. I'm obsessed with some of his stories, this Lee Duffy, uh, Viv Graham stuff. It's, it is mind-blowing. So go down, please support our fellas. You know, they've come a long way today to do this. And um, really appreciate all the new subscribers. Rapidly approaching half a mil. So subscription logo is in the bottom right-hand corner of the screen. It's free to subscribe helps us get the word out to more people helps us attract more high profile guests long live the queen <laughs> <laughs> huge thank you to people donated donation links in the description box so we can do these recordings in the studios like this 
And we're looking forward to seeing all of your questions and comments on this one. Thank and we've you. got Jamie on again tomorrow, haven't we? <laughs> I have, I'll be back. And uh, I will be, um, you know, obviously I came to the public spotlight with, with Paul Sykes. Uh, he's that guy who talked about punching sharks. And yeah. people are just like, who's this guy? And then... I can't know, wait for the book. Just, just built on, and then there's a Duffy, there's a Cockles, and the Eagles. It's going to be a good book. So, yeah, you know, good, good, I think good, I'm good, writing good, my good. 17th one at the minute, and, you know, God spares me, there's 100 books in me, so I'm just yeah. really, really busy. And, uh, yeah, I'm telling all of them, I look forward to meeting you tomorrow. Thanks for coming on, fellas. Cheers, man. Cheers. 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 Cheers.